All right, guys. Uh, feels good to be back. It's been like a whole week since I've done anything. Um, I'm sorry. Like I said, I've just I've got so much shit to do, especially with my studies. It's getting crazy. Um, so today I want to talk about mixing. I'm going to give you a couple of mixing tips because I could just do grails and tutorials and stuff, but I guess just learning how to make one decent growl is not going to help you be able to make good music. So when it comes down to mixing, mastering, creativity, how to structure your songs. So I'm going to give you a few mixing tips first. And the reason I want to do this is because my newest song, Despair and Faith, is on SoundCloud. And in my studio, it sounds dope. Like, it sounds hectic. But I listened to it in the car, and it sounded like shit. And it's the hard truth that you got to live with. Um, and the main reason is because car stereos, shopping malls, um, and these your phone most people are listening to your music on this okay this is mono it's literally one speaker so you need to constantly check your mix in mono um so so and just also just quickly I'm not going to be releasing any new music for the next two weeks because I'm saving up for brand new speakers because I don't have studio monitors. Um, I want studio monitors and I'm going to buy myself a mono reference speaker which is pretty much... So I'm going to be using two studio monitors for my stereo and I'm going to have a little speaker in the middle that I'm going to go... that I'm going to mix and master in mono. Um, and that seems to be the key and the trick because when you listen to your favourite artist, have you ever noticed when you're listening to them on your phone why it still sounds so good? It's because it's all mixed in mono. So, I've got a little, I've got a track here that I've released like, I don't know, a year and a half ago maybe. This is how it's, it's mixed okay. But I just want to explain some things to you guys. So you've got the intro here. Oh. Everything there is mixed okay. Here I got a little bit of stereo separation, but not a lot. Um, if you have ozone, what you could do is put it onto your master, right? I've never done this before, but I'm just going to assume this is going to work. Because ozone has a mono button, so hit mono and let's play that again. So it still sounds okay in mono. So I mixed, and I didn't have ozone when I made this song, so I, I mixed this pretty on point. If it sounds good in mono, it's just like I said, it goes back to your phone and stuff, it's going to sound good on that. But, um, so, once again, it comes down to your ear. So, you've got the song playing, okay? You're not going to have... So, let's just loop this part. Okay. Okay, that's now obviously too loud, so you you wouldn't leave that like that, like, you know what I mean? Like, you just have to sort of be a bit smart with it, so, it, it, I can't really give you, like, go-to tips, because, it, like I said, it comes down to your ears. Some people are just really good at this, and some people just aren't. Um, so, you want everything to fit nicely together. So, another thing you could do when it comes to the EQ, right? <laughs> To 
make things a little less less harsh, you could just drop the sixth node here, drop it just a little bit. So I've got this bass thing EQ like that, and this bass thing is this. So look how it's EQ'd, okay. When I go to the lead, for example, where's that? I don't want to EQ this the same as that, especially if they've got the same frequencies. That's how they start to clash together. So obviously, if I've EQ'd the other thing with this down, then you want the lead to be EQ'd like that. Because if you do that, then it's going to be exactly the same as it is, and that's how things are going to start to clash. You need to make room for different frequencies in the mix. So I hope you guys are trying to understand what I'm saying. So it's just about making room for each other. Um, Another tip. Do not mix like this. Don't listen to this by itself. Do a whole bunch of mixing and adding effects and stuff. And then do this. Because this might sound good by itself, but the second... The second you put it into context with everything, it could sound shit. So mix in content. So this is safe for you. You started making a song. You've only got you've only got you've only got your lead and your drums. Okay. Mix it like this. Don't mix just a lead by itself. So like this. See what I mean? Don't mix it by itself. Um, then, another thing you could do is when you first open the project, for example, let's just say you've got a brand new project, hold control shift, I think it is. Control, oh, just control. So hold control, grab everything, so highlight the whole mixer, okay, and bring these down, let's just say, Minus two, so look up here, this is what it tells you, okay, minus two dB is perfect, um, that gives you plenty, even on the master, if you want, you don't have to do this, I've only just started doing this, it gives you guaranteed headroom, because, like I said, in the, when I've released this, have a look here, when I play it, there, Some channels are clipping. That's a big no-no. So you don't want it. You don't want that. So if you bring everything down in the master, you've got two dB to push things to the limit. Um, so that's another thing you could do. Or yeah, we still make things stereo when you're panning. This leaves room in your mix to sound because stereo is obviously two speakers, so it leaves room and makes things sound nice and wide. When, you do, when you're mixing a mono, it's obviously not going to matter, but you need to keep into consideration when you're mixing in mono, you're mixing for people's phones. When you're mixing in stereo, you're mixing for the club. You're listening, to, you're mixing and making music for, you know, people to play your music out loud. So you need to make it, it sounds stupid and it sounds hard, but you've got to make your music sound good for both devices, for you, mono, people's phones, and the big club systems and stuff like that. I still can't even do that. Um, I have, I make decent music in my studio because you're so accustomed to your acoustics in your studio. And then sometimes I listen to my music on my phone and I'm just like, you know what I mean? And it sucks because I want to be 100% with everything, but it's a learning process. So that's why I want to buy a mono mixing, um, uh, speaker so like I said you could do the whole ozone on the master and just mix in click the mono button every now and then if something sounds off in mono fix it um, 
another thing to your FX, keep them low. So by FX, I mean, where are they? The hell? Do I even have FX in this one? Yeah, these things. You just got to keep them nice and low. Um, you don't really have to EQ them, but I do just to, you know what I mean, just to clean them up a little bit. Don't do this. Don't add reverbs to everything. Make a reverb bus. So you just have reverb on one channel, and then you can link all these into this reverb bus. Just like that, and you just add the reverb like that, because this re heaps of re reverb actually takes up the most CPU, believe it or not. Um, what else can I talk about? Mixing. I should write down the things I was going to say. Um, mixing your drops. I struggled with this when I first started music for a while. Um, so we'll have a look, quick little listen. So this is mixed okay. Um, your arps and stuff. See? Very low volume. They're just filling up the mix. They're not... I mean, unless you want the ARP to be the most important part of your drop, then you have it very low. It just gives it a slight groove and doesn't have the drop so empty. Um, your bases. See, another, th another thing is if you do have stereo speakers and then a mono speaker, you make your bases in stereo and then you mix it and master it all in mono. Um, and once again, like I said, you have to just trust your ear with your bases, so... You just have to trust your ear. Um, like I said, try to do everything in context if you can. Don't just, you know, don't just EQ this by itself. And then listen to it like this. Because then it could sound like shit. Um, yeah, I mean, really, that's all I really wanted to explain to you guys. I really wanted to explain the whole dropping the volumes when you first start making the song. Um, because it's all about the headroom, no clipping. So this... Big no-no, you don't want that. Um, yeah, I mean, really, that's all I can say at the moment. I'm just trying to think off the top of my head something else you could do. Um, but yeah, if you don't have Ozone, I don't know if FL has a mono button. I don't think it does, to be honest. Um, I'm pretty sure... Ableton does, where you can click a button and it makes everything mono and supposedly, but if you don't understand what I mean by mono reference, I'll just show you quickly. Yeah, one of these. Can you see that? Yeah, okay. So I'm going to get two new stereo speakers, right, studio monitors, and then one of these it's literally about this big and if you get used to making your music on that it's going to sound great everywhere so once I do it's only going to take me about two weeks to get all this new stuff so bear with me I'm still going to be uploading tutorials and stuff once I do get these I'll be making videos and reviews on how to use them how to mix with them and stuff but um yeah I just need a little bit of time I hope these tips can just help you I'm also going to continue the rhythm series because that seems to be my most popular video <laughs> Surprise, surprise. But, um, but yeah, guys, so like I said, just trust your ear. Don't, if it sounds like shit, just obviously, because it, it does. So don't go with it. All right? Um, peace out, guys. I'll see you in the next video.